Um, good morning and good afternoon to the journalists and others across the region joining us online. You may have watched the forum earlier this morning that we convened jointly with the Lancet COVID-19 Commission. Many interesting points were made there by speakers from across Asia and the Pacific. As 2020, 2020 come to a close, we've been reflecting on the response to COVID-19, in particular, how countries and areas in this region have managed to keep numbers comparatively low, lessons that can help in the year to come, and what each of us needs to do to minimize the illness, death, and disruption that this virus can cause going forward. As Babatunde mentioned, the COVID-19 situations in the Americas and Europe is incredibly challenging for people and the governments there. In this global context, the Western Pacific region, our region has been comparatively fortunate. While every country has had a different experience of COVID-19, overall, the impact in the Western Pacific has been less severe than elsewhere. More than a quarter of the people on earth live in this region, but to date, we've had just 1.0% of confirmed case recorded globally. But this doesn't take away the fact that it's been a year of unprecedented challenge for people in this region, not for a moment. It has been devastating for thousands of family who lost loved ones, incredibly difficult for countless and challenging for children. Whoever you are, wherever you live, as long as the virus is circulating somewhere, we all remain at risk and we must keep preparing for the worst case scenario. In this regard, I want to make two particular appeals today. My first appeal is to younger, more socially active people, maybe those under the age of 40. I know how tired you are of this pandemic. And I understand that anxiety, fears, and uncertainties you're feeling. The disruptions to your lives and then difficult choices you're having to make. Some of you may not even feel particularly vulnerable to this disease. You might think that even if you get infected, you won't get very sick. But truth is, you can. And aside from your personal vulnerability, I urge you to think about those who may be at higher risk of severe COVID. If you catch the virus, you could unknowingly pass it on to your parent or grandparent, your neighbor or friend with an underlying condition. I also urge you to think of health workers. Perhaps you have a friend or relative who are doctors or nurse. They have been working day and night for almost a year. They are exhausted. And so please, please do everything you can to avoid infection for yourself and for everybody around you. By following the advice of health authorities, you can directly contribute to protect the lives of people in your community and in doing so to reviving your societies and economies in 2021. I also wanted to appeal to the government across the region, please add additional layer of surveillance that picks up early signs of cluster of infection among those groups that is difficult to catch with the existing system. 
My second plea is related to vaccines. The news of COVID-19 vaccine starting to roll out in the United Kingdom and USA is very promising. There is some light at the end of a long tunnel. But these vaccines are not a silver bullet that will end the pandemic in the near future. The development of safe and effective vaccine is one thing, but producing them in adequate quantities and reaching everyone who needs them is another. They will initially only available in limited quantities and high risk groups should be prioritized first. This means that tired as we all are of this pandemic, we must stick to the actions and behavior which protect not only ourselves, but also those around us. Hand washing, mask wearing, physical distancing, and avoiding places that have a high risk of transmission. So as we prepare to mark important religious and cultural festivals like Christmas and New Year, please remember that the best way to show love and care for those in your life is to not give hug or gather in large groups the way you might normally do. I know this is difficult, but for now, we must keep making the choices that will reduce transmission of the virus and protect our families and our communities. By doing so, we can go into 2021, 2021 with hope. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Kasai. Um, we are now going to get started with the question and answer portion of this virtual press conference. Uh, we've received many questions already in advance. And of course, we're going to try to get to as many as we can, as well as any that come in during this virtual press conference using the chat function. Let's get started with a question that we have from Jenny Le Ravello at DevEx. She asks, are there timeline projections for when countries in the Western Pacific can expect COVID-19 vaccine rollout? I would like to ask Dr. Kasai to make some initial remarks and perhaps then we can have some follow-up from uh, Dr. Escalante. Go ahead, Dr. Kasai. Okay, thank you very much for this question. Um, actual rollout at the country level uh, is a complex and needs to go through uh, several steps, such as a registrations or market authorizations and logistics preparations on the ground and training for the healthcare workers and set up mechanism for pharmacovigilance. Some countries in the Western Pacific, I'm aware that they are start rolling out vaccines in the a coming few weeks, but most of uh, other member states in the region roll out uh, might occur uh, mid or late uh, 2021 next year. WHO is working with the partners uh, through the a access to COVID tools accelerator and its a vaccine filler COVAX to speed up the development and the a manufacturing of a safe and an effective a vaccines and also to ensure that there is a fair and equitable access to this vaccine for all countries. If the right scale and then the type of investment are made, the end of 2021 next year should see adequate dose to vaccines, uh, should have a adequate doses to vaccinate a, a high priority population in all countries around the world. There is a uncertainty, some uncertainties, and there is a some uh, unknowns, but we now need that uh, commitment. In the meantime, we WHO, along with the, uh, all the partners, together with the partners, will continue to help uh, our member states, countries, 
in uh, preparing for the operations for the vaccine.